guys welcome back to my channel if you're new around here my name is hannah if you're not new welcome back i don't really know what today's vlog is gonna be i really like need to get my life together in terms of school and youtube and like cleaning my apartment and stuff like that so somewhere along the lines of like a productive day in my life is what we're gonna be doing today so i hope you guys are in the mood for some productivity and really fun like cleaning school youtube social media side hustle type vlog figured i'd start off the vlog with a little coffee chat so yeah like i said i really need to clean up my apartment it's kind of like all over the place at the moment i just have like dishes in the sink dishes in the dishwasher that need to be put away clothes randomly around my bedroom that need to be put away i kind of want to like wipe down my shower i have an exam that i need to take for school today and i hate the exams for this class the professor allocates two and a half hours to this exam and typically when professors or like teachers if you guys are in school you know this they'll allocate more time than what's needed but when i say it literally does take two and a half hours to complete this exam i am not freaking kidding you it takes so long to take this exam because there's so much math involved and the exams are actually like pretty challenging so i'm gonna be doing that a little bit later today but i need to like make sure i sit down and have two and a half hours to do that and i'm just like not in the mind space to start it right this second so i have to do that a little bit later today then you start editing this vlog i need to edit some instagram photos for some brand deals and stuff like that so i'm just gonna take you guys along through that entire process like literally my entire day so cheers i'll drink to that bro Alright, just did a very simple makeup routine. Even though I'm staying in and I'm getting stuff done in the apartment, I still kind of want to feel put together. I just feel like that makes me feel more productive and like work a little bit harder. So I did mascara, a little bit of blush, my Laneige lip mask as the lip gloss situation, and then I did some brow gel and I also did a little bit of concealer. So this is like my simple everyday staying in the apartment makeup look. I don't really put makeup on my face normally if I'm staying in the apartment, but because I like am going to be on camera today and because I want to get things done and I want to feel put together, it just like makes me feel a little bit better, you know what I mean? So I love it. It's very simple, very easy, and also like one of my go-to makeup routines for the summer because when I'm out and about and I'm sweating, I don't like to have that much makeup on my face, so this is like the perfect look for it. So we'll show you the products that I used. It's literally five products. I combined these two concealers because I'm a little bit paler than when I went on my cruise. I combined this bare minerals if it focuses bare minerals original liquid mineral concealer in the shade fair 1w with the nars concealer in the shade light 22 this one is too dark for my face but this one is too light for my face which is why i combine them i actually like the nars concealer better than the bare minerals but i have both of them so i just like combine them and then once i run out of them i'll probably just stick with nars but Right now, neither are my shade, and I have both of them, so it worked out. Then for mascara, I've shared this a million and one times in the vlogs, but this is the only mascara I use, and I've used it for years, and it's the Lancome Hypnos Drama Mascara in the shade, like, black. I think it's, like, the darkest black that you can get. I absolutely love this mascara. I've used it for years. I will never switch anytime soon unless I find one that's a little bit better. I love it. I feel like it makes my eyelashes look dark and very long, so I'm obsessed with it. And then I use the Anastasia Brow Gel, as does everyone. Um, this is just the clear one, and I really don't feel like it needs much explanation. It's a brow gel. It just helps keep your brows in place, and I love it. And then I use the Merit Beauty Blush. This is the liquid blush in the shade Beverly Hills. I love it. I just apply it with my finger and like pat it onto my cheeks. And I feel like it makes my cheeks look very sun-kissed and rosy. I'll also put a little bit on my nose to like really give it that sun-kissed look. But I'm obsessed with it. So I'll have all these products linked down below. I love them. They're my go-to summer sun-kissed simple makeup routine look. Now comes the cleanup process. Honestly, this place isn't too messy, but I do have some things that I need to tidy up. I need to fold that blanket. I could clean up this situation, put the tripod away, clean up all of this. I have dishes in the sink that needs to be put away. There are dishes in the dishwasher that need to be put away. And then I have a pile of clothes on my desk that just accumulate literally every weekend, I swear. That needs to be put away. Another tripod that needs to be put away. The only thing that I did do yesterday that was productive and kind of eased my load today was I put new sheets on my bed. And guys, you guys know that I've had white sheets or like cream sheets on my bed pretty much since I've moved in. And always Brooklyn in. I have like three different Brooklyn in sets, but I just put this new sheet set on my bed yesterday and I'm literally so excited about it because I feel like it really elevates the 
look of this room and I feel like it matches the picture frame and with all that being said I do want to thank Brooklinen for sponsoring today's video you guys didn't really think I was gonna stray away from them did you no no guys I am literally obsessed with this new sheet set it's actually insane I put it on yesterday and slept in it overnight last night and I just feel like it's truly a game changer. As you guys know, now that I'm getting older, I just feel like it's only right to invest in nice high quality sheet sets. I just feel like it's part of growing up, getting your own apartment, you know the whole ordeal. But with that being said, most high quality sheet sets are extremely expensive. Before I chose Brooklyn in two years ago, I did my research on the market to look for a high quality sheet set that looked nice but also felt nice, that had great reviews. Most sheet sets that I stumbled across were high quality but the price was also extremely high and honestly was just so far out of my price range so I felt really lucky when I stumbled across Brooklyn because I feel like they produce high quality sheets but at an affordable price and won't break the bank whatsoever I've had Brooklyn and sheets on my bed for almost two years now so I feel like I'm a Brooklyn and expert at this point and can really vouch for the fact that they are worth the money and they are worth the hype. Their sheets are literally some of the best sheets that I've ever owned and ever slept on. When I originally bought Brooklyn in, I bought the Luxe Sateen set. I also have since then accumulated the Classic set and now I have the Linen set. So like I said, I'm basically a Brooklyn in expert at this point and you can ask me all of your Brooklyn in questions and I probably know the answer to them. I'm kidding, kinda, although I do know a lot about Brooklyn in and because of the fact that I now have three other different products, I feel like I can truly vouch for them. So yes, this is my third sheet set and I'm so excited to introduce it as Brooklinen's new linen summer collection. Brooklinen has launched their new linen summer collection and they have so many fun new colors to choose from. They have hydrangea, they have indigo which is the one that I currently have on my bed. They also have terracotta and tangerine pinstripe. So many fun colors for summer. Putting the linen bed sheets on my bed has actually been a game changer because as you guys know it gets so freaking hot in New York in the summer and there's nothing worse than going to bed at night just knowing that you're going to wake up in a puddle of your own sweat. But the good thing about a linen bed sheet is actually made to be lighter and more breathable than your average bed sheet set, which makes it literally perfect for summer. Linen has unique moisture wicking properties that makes it even cooler than cotton, which is why it feels lighter and more breathable when you're sleeping at night. I tested out the linen bed sheet last night and I can vouch for the fact that it's definitely a lot cooler and a lot more comfortable in the summertime than my Luxe Sateen set or my Core set. It just is like so light and breathable and I didn't wake up a sweaty mess which was amazing. And aside from when you're sleeping in it and how it feels, it honestly just has like this light airy summer look to it that I'm absolutely obsessed with. Right now my bed isn't fully made but once I fully make my bed I'm going to show you guys what it looks like when it's on and honestly it's truly a game changer for this room. I don't know, I just feel like my room feels like summer right now. When purchasing sheets from Brooklyn, and I would recommend doing their bundle set which basically gets you their sheet set, extra pillowcases, and a duvet cover. I purchased the bundle set for all three of the different types of Brooklyn sheets that I have on my bed and honestly it's just nice that it's all there and you don't have to go through the website and individually pick out the different items that and the fact that if you choose to do the bundle rather than choose the individual items it saves you 25% so you actually get like a pretty significant discount by doing the bundle set rather than going in and picking out your sheet and then picking out your pillowcases and then picking out your duvet cover. So it saves you so much time, but it also saves you money, which is really nice. And don't worry, I wouldn't leave you guys hanging. I was able to snag a super nice discount for you guys. So Brooklyn is offering you guys $20 off of any purchase over $100. All you have to do is head to the description of my video, click the link that'll take you to the Brooklyn website, type in my code, and once you start shopping, once you add the items to the cart, Put the code in at checkout and it'll get you guys $20 off of any order over $100 or more. It's very easy to spend over $100 in Brooklyn in because once you're on the website, you're just going to realize that there's so many cute items and colors to choose from. For the sake of summer, definitely check out the linen set. Definitely check out their colors. I literally wanted every single color on the website. I was torn between the hydrangea blue and the indigo, but I decided to go with the indigo because I feel like it kind of matched the vibe of my apartment and my room a little bit better. But if I were to go get a second linen set aka my fourth Brooklyn linen set I think that I would lean probably more towards the hydrangea blue or the terracotta was also really pretty as well I'm real willing at this point so I'm gonna wrap it up but make sure to head to the description of this video to not only check out the discount code that I have for you guys but also to check out the new linen summer collection that Brooklyn and came out with because safe to say I am obsessed guys you can't tell me 
that this doesn't match perfectly with all of the colors that I already have because it does. Look at how, like, this just, I feel like, elevates the room and I'm obsessed with it. Yesterday I folded down the sheets and I loved the look of that, but today I just tried to fold it up and I kind of think it looks a little bit neater this way. And then I just take this blanket and throw it at the end of the bed. And I really feel like this, the look of the linen, but also the color of the linen, truly just elevates this room and brings it to the next level and I'm obsessed with it, so. Uh, I am a Brooklyn stan, as you guys know, and I always will be. But this new summer collection is in fact chef's kiss. Okay, I think I'm gonna tackle this room first and then move on to the bedroom, even though I know I was just in the bedroom, but we're doing things backwards around here. There is a life I lead in this city Hurrying to cut my teeth I can take what I need to get by It doesn't make it easy The other piece of my heart moves slow Somewhere in the great unknown When I return from the afterglow Will you carry me like I am whole again? Take me back where I belong I want it all I had a feeling but the feeling is all gone Wait, hold on Put me together Take me back Taking a quick cleaning break to have a late lunch I haven't even eaten breakfast yet and it's already 1 o'clock so <laughs> I'm having like a brunch situation but I just made a yogurt bowl with granola and the fruit This is my go to as you guys know so i'm not gonna break it down but i'm excited for this because i am getting kind of hungry i finished my ochre bowl and honestly i'm just in the mood to procrastinate some more because the last thing that i want to do is take the exam that i have to take because i don't feel like taking it because it's going to take so long and my brain doesn't feel like doing math so i instead i'm going to do a little book haul i'm going to start by sharing my recent reads and then move into tbrs if you don't like book content just like fast forward through this portion of the video but i know a lot of you guys do so that's why i'm sharing it i didn't do a june reset video kind of over the reset videos in my personal opinion i just like am not vibing with them anymore and i was doing my book hauls in my monthly reset videos so now i just feel like i need to incorporate them here and there in these vlogs so i'm gonna do books that i've read recently their ratings whether or not i recommend them yada 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 there's like a handful for the recent reads and there's a handful for tbr so hopefully you guys can get some good recommendations out of these the last book that i read in the month of may that i think that i mentioned that i was currently reading but didn't finish last time i was i don't really remember which book I've recommended to you guys and which ones I haven't to be completely honest because it's been so long since I've done a book haul. The Best of Friends by Lucinda Berry. Lucinda Berry has now claimed the number one spot for my psychological thriller authors. She is such a good psychological thriller writer. I'm obsessed with every single book that I've read by her so far so needless to say this was a five-star read. I have so many more of her books on my TBR list on Amazon that I need to purchase. Um, I'm taking a little break from psychological thrillers because I really went hard on them for a while and was reading psychological thriller after psychological thriller. So I'm taking a little break but I absolutely love this book. Best friends Lindsay, Kendra, and Danny endure every parent's nightmare when a tragic accident befalls their teenage boys leaving one dead, another in a coma, and a third too traumatized to speak. This all happens in one night, so basically the whole book is about them uncovering what happened that night and trying to get each of the boys to speak to kind of like piece together the puzzles of like what happened, who did it. Type of situation, it's so good. I finished it in literally one night. There's like not much more I can say about it just because it was like really good. Highly recommend this one and just all of Lucinda Berry's books, honestly. All right, the next book that I read recently was People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry. I loved this book, guys. I know this book is kind of controversial on book talk and booktube and whatever book 
things you want to call it but I love this book and I know a lot of people don't like it because people like beach read more but I personally liked the people we meet on vacation more than I liked beach read I think I liked it because of the travel aspect and the fact that New York City was incorporated into this one so I could kind of relate to it on a personal level a little bit more I was drawn to like the theme of travel and I was also drawn to the theme of the city and all of that kind of stuff so I personally like this one better than beach read hot take I know but I would recommend it a thousand times over. I gave it like 4.5 stars out of 5, I think, and I loved it. it. There was definitely some parts in the book that were like a little bit snooze festy for me, but overall, I was a big fan of it. Past and present storyline, I really love the way it was written. I really loved the storyline of it overall. A really good read. Next book that I read was An Honest Lie by Taryn Fisher. This was my first Taryn Fisher novel and this book had me a little torn because one, I think the back in the description of the book is misleading to what the book is actually about. The back is literally just like 5% of what actually happens in the whole book which I thought was interesting so I'm not even gonna bother to read the back of the book to you guys because I didn't think it accurately reflected what was the actual book was about if that makes any sense. I gave this book 3.5 out of 5 stars. I'm not sure I'll be picking up any more Taryn Fisher novels. It kind of took me a while to get through this book and I just like didn't love it as much as I love other mystery thriller books. I thought 50% of the book was interesting because there's a few different storylines so I liked one particular storyline but I thought another storyline was just extremely unnecessary and I feel like I can't really say it without giving away important parts of the book so I'm not gonna say it but just like read it for yourself and then tell me your opinion but I just think that the back of the book doesn't reflect what the actual book's about and I only liked half of the storyline so. That's my opinion on this book. Sorry, that was really vague, I know, but I just feel like I can't really talk about it without giving away what the actual book's about and like important parts of the book. So if you've read the book, we can have a discussion about it in the comments, but I'm not gonna say it on here. Next book that I read, pulling these off my bookshelf as I talk so they don't have a mess to put away after. Um, next book that I read was Legend by Marie Lu. This book has been on my TBR for forever and I ordered on Amazon last week and finally got around to reading it. The description of this book kind of reminded me of like a Hunger Games, Harry Potter, like nostalgic sci-fi fantasy dystopian type novels that I used to read in like middle school, high school. So that was what I was aiming for when I picked up this book. I wanted like a Hunger Games type book and I feel like I definitely succeeded in doing that. I liked this book, I gave it 4 out of 5 stars. You can definitely tell that it is made for young adult readers because it was really easy to read, it was a very fast read, some of the dialect in here was just kind of like immature, the lettering on the page is really big. Overall, like definitely a young adult book, but I actually really liked it and if you like The Hunger Games, Harry Potter, all of those nostalgic books that we used to read in middle school, high school, you'll like this book. And I'm definitely planning on reading the second and third book. It's a trilogy, so this was just number one. Next book that I read was One True Love by Taylor Jenkins Reid. This book is making its rounds on book talk and social media. This is one of her older books. I don't think it's... I think this was written... Let me see if I can find a date. This is definitely one of her older books, but it resurfaced and people are really into reading Taylor Jenkins Reid's older books now. 2016. It's definitely an older book, but not too old, I guess. I really like this book. I gave it 4.5 out of 5 stars. It was like the sweetest love story, but also like makes you want to cry and laugh at the same time. Like I was, I literally like shed tears reading this book and I never cry reading books because I like feel like I can really separate my emotions from the actual book but this book i couldn't this book just like really tugged at my heartstrings this book is about this woman named emma she ends up marrying her high school sweetheart his name is jesse um and then jesse ends up going missing when he's out on like an assignment for a travel thing that he does and everyone just assumes that he died in this plane crash because all the other passengers in the plane crash died as well so assuming that her husband's dead emma moves home falls in love again, has a whole fiance, and in the midst of all this, finds out that her husband actually didn't die in the plane crash. He's actually alive and he's coming home to her. So the whole book is about her deciding to either go back to her husband or stay with her fiance. Instead of chapters, the book is broken up by timeline instead of chapters, which I really liked. So there's two past timelines and then two future timelines, and it I don't really know how to explain it. Basically, just read the book. But 
it's really good i loved it like i said i ended up like crying and i never cry but i also ended up laughing i definitely feel like there are two different sides to this book like you either want her to end up with her husband or you want her to end up with her fiance um i was on one side i'm curious as to what sides you guys were on so if you've read this book tell me if you're team husband or team fiance um i was personally team fiance i'm not gonna say how the book ended but that's just my opinion team fiance my current read is chasing love by kat t mason this was a book that i found on book talk and it was one of those book talk books that like you couldn't tell that it was a book until they said the title of the book at the end of the tiktok that probably didn't make any sense but basically i thought it was like a real life story and then they said like read more about this in this book and i was like okay well you caught my attention so now i have to read the book i am only 63 pages into this and it is not good so far i'm really hoping that it gets better but this may be a dnf for me because the, i just like the writing in this is so bad and there's just no storyline and there's no plot and the book just jumps into them like immediately like taking each other's clothes off which i guess if you like that type of book like this is for you but i just like a little bit of like a storyline you know what i mean and this book has no storyline so right now i'm not a fan of it i'm only 63 pages in i'm hoping it gets better but i am not gonna hold my breath and it may be a dnf for me but stay tuned all right moving on to my tbr list i've shared a few of these in previous vlogs so i'm not going to go in depth about the description but some of my newer books are Every Summer After by Carly Fortune. This is another TikTok book talk book. I get most of my recommendations from book talk, to be honest, but um, it is what it is. That or YouTube. Carter Sullivan has good recs, Haley Pham has good recs, and I've been recently watching random videos that pop up on my like recommended page, so I get a lot of my book recommendations from there as well. This is a book that's trending currently. I'm pretty sure this is her debut novel, and I've heard nothing but good reviews about this book, so I'm very excited to read it. It's like a nice little summer romance book, very on theme, so I decided to read that one. The next one is The Turn of the Key. I shared this in like several, several, several vlogs back. I think like last time I was in Virginia, I picked up this book. Just haven't had a chance to read it yet, so it's still on my TBR list. I'm pretty sure it is a thriller, so whenever I get around to it, I'll give you guys a review. Next book is The Lonely City by Olivia Lang. I've had this book for a really long time and it's been sitting on my bookshelf for a really long time. I'm just like having a hard time getting myself to read it because I've come to the realization recently that I don't like books that take place in New York because I live here, I think. While they should be relatable, I find myself like judging them. I'm just over it. I feel like when I, when I read a book, I want it to transport me to a new place, so I don't want to read a book about a place that I'm already in. And so I don't know what I was thinking when I picked up this book, but I will get around to reading it eventually, just maybe not while I'm sitting in my apartment in New York. Maybe I'll bring it on a vacation with me and read it so I can feel like I'm back home. I don't know, but eventually I will get to it, just not anytime soon. Next one is The Woman in Cabin 10. This is another thriller. It's about a woman that goes on a cruise ship and a murder happens and everyone's trapped on this cruise ship and trying to figure out like who did it. So this is an older book, I think several years old. I also picked this up when I was in Virginia. Yeah, 2016. I just haven't had a chance to read it yet, but I will get to it eventually. And then this one's on my TBR list, but not anytime soon because I didn't realize that this was like the third book in a series. It's The Heart Principle. So I have to actually order the first two books for this book and then I'll get around to it. But I was excited about this because it's like a romance book and it seems super fun. Like a unique romance book. So I was excited to read it, but now I have to read the other two first, which is just a lot. So that's all that I have on my TBR list right now. Well, there's more, but those are like the physical TBR books that I have. I have so many more on my Amazon book list but i'm not going to share those until i have the actual physical copies so that is that hopefully you guys got some good recommendations out of either the books that i've read or the books that i'm planning on reading and let me know your opinions down below whether or not you liked any of the books that i shared or if you are team fiance not my camera moving without me realizing it if you're a team fiance or team husband for the one true loves book by taylor jenkins Reid. All right, I'm finally gonna sit down and try to take my exam. I'm gonna review all the stuff first and then start it. I just need to get it over with or else I'm gonna keep procrastinating all day. I like literally hate these exams with my whole heart. So might as well just get it over with. Just finished my exam and it's now 3.30. It didn't take me as long as I thought it was going to. It only took me like an hour and a half versus the full two and a half hours. And I got an 81 and that's pre-curve. So after the curve, I'll probably get like an 86 or an 87, which is totally fine by me because I honestly anticipated failing that exam. <laughs> 
it wasn't as hard as I thought it was and the fact that it's open notes definitely helps like that's like the one good thing about online grad school and online school in general is a lot of the exams and quizzes and assignments are open notes and I'm like the world's worst test taker so I love that about online school is that you don't get penalized penalized is that the word for using like your notes or any of the course material and stuff like that you just obviously can't use like homework uh websites or you know stuff like that that would straight up give you the answer but luckily he takes a lot of the questions for the exam straight from lecture questions and he just rewords them so i just use like the same formulas and seven different numbers and stuff like that so that's what i did this time and it worked to my favor so finished with that and i'm pretty much done with everything that I need to get done today. I do have to take a brand photo, so I think I'm gonna go up to my rooftop and take that, which means that I have to get ready. One more thing left on the agenda, but at least that's kind of like a fun thing to do because I actually don't mind taking pictures because I love taking pictures. What do we mean? I literally have a YouTube channel, so I'm gonna do that, but I just figured I'd give you guys an update on the exam. We didn't fail. Success in my book. Just took my handy dandy assistant, aka my tripod, up to the roof and shot some brand photos. Sneak peek, not this one. This is me almost falling off my roof. This, 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 this. I'm not sure which ones I'm gonna go with yet, but I'm thinking maybe these. Guess you'll have to stay tuned and follow me on Instagram to see the final product. But I feel like overall it was a success. I never know how these like tripod pictures are going to turn out, especially if it's me by myself. But I feel like I did a pretty good job. So I'm very happy about that. And I got that out of the way. Hello. It's a lot later. Sorry if you can hear my air conditioner in the background. I just turned it on and it's really hot in my room, so it's staying on. I'm quickly ending off this video here. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to check the description of this video for $20 off, $100 or more off of Brooklinen. Also check out their new summer linen collection. Guys, I swear the colors are so good. You're gonna love them. I crawled into bed so early tonight, mostly because these sheets are literally so comfortable. So you're definitely gonna wanna check them out. Also, if you're new around here and you're not subscribed, don't forget to subscribe down below. Give this video a thumbs up and I will see you guys next time. Bye. I had a feeling but the feeling is all gone.